Five, five Mazda truck frame rails. Ah, ah, ah. I think that's what they call a Bluetooth frame rail. Well, Mazda fans, we got us a 92B2200 extended cab. To all you B-Series Mazda truck owners out there, be thankful if you live out of the rust belt. this is going on, let me show you what I've been up to. I spared you from the monotony, torturous monotony of watching what I've done, but I've got all of the brackets clean and ground, ready for welds, all the way. Let me turn this off for now. Cab mounts, the bed mounts, spring mounts, the cross members, you have to take my word for it. And uh, with any rust repair job, it takes way longer to get ready to install material than it does actually make the new frame. So that's what we've been up to for oh, at least a couple hours. Um, as you saw, I'm cutting the first piece of frame and I'm planning on getting it to come out and, and uh, up in this direction. And then I'll use the fixture to put the thinner tube in here. I shouldn't say thinner. I'm using 2x4, which is close to the original size rectangle, from the middle of the cab all the way back here, and then to the top over here. And then I'm going to transition to 2x3, raising up an inch to get some additional axle clearance and then drop it back down to the factory height according to my fixture here and land it back here where the rear frame rail is also the bed mount. So I'm going to cut some tubing, tack it in position and then hopefully get to the point where I can start burning it in and then that will give me, with leaving the other side intact That'll give me the opportunity to make sure it's all level and square. And then I can use this as a template for the other side. So I'll update you when I have some more progress. So this is Geometry 101. It's woodworkers have been doing this for probably a thousand years. Same thing with uh, metal workers for hundreds of years. If you want to cut an angle, you measure the angle that you want as your final result. You divide that angle by two. And if you cut the material at half of that angle measurement, and then once you cut it, you flip it over, and you should end up with the desired angle. So uh, the angle of the Mazda frame measured 18 degrees. I went to 20 degrees because I am going to effectively c-notch the frame so I needed the rear section to raise up sooner uh, but I couldn't go too crazy because the gas filler neck and everything needs to skip over the frame so this is my first attempt at trying to figure out what I want for an angle so I'm going to prep not only the mitered cut but also the end that's going to slip inside the stock frame rail and try to uh, begin to position this to develop the portion of the rear end that goes over the top of the axle and then transitions to the um, horizontal piece that goes out to the back bumper. Here we go. Alright, I got the frame rail clamped in place. 
I'm going to tick tack uh, all of the connections so it's got a good firm tack weld and uh, then I'm going to actually pull the whole frame rail out and use it as a template uh, and a fixture to create the other side. So one of the things that my mentor taught me is, especially when you weld it inside a car and roll cages and stuff, this uh, long piece of welding wire is, when you try to move it around the weld, it kind of bangs into stuff. So we always uh, started out with half length welding wire. Well, how do you figure out where the halfway point is? Well, if you use a pair of side cutters to cut your stuff, if you balance it and then cut it, usually you'll end up with almost exact half. So there's the end and there's the end just by balancing it. So real quick way to figure out how to cut your welding wire in half, balance it in a pair of side cutters, and for the most part, you'll get what you want. Pretty trivial, but maybe it'll help somebody out. There's the fixture for the new one. All right, I got the first rail all put together and ready to duplicate. Time to go into production mode.
so we're using the original frame that I created, piece number one, as a fixture, as I said before, to create frame number two, three, and four. We're getting there. I'm doing all the two by three and all the miter cuts first, and then we'll move on to the two by four sections. Five, five Mazda truck frame rails. Ah, ah, ah. Well, it's not cornfield customs quality. I just don't happen to have a CNC mandrel bent rectangular tubing bender. But what I do have is two frame rails ready to go in the extended cab B2200. I have two frame rails ready to go into the LS swapped Mazda. And then I have a fifth 
frame rail that is a template that I have so I could reproduce this down the road. Okay, got to have my head examined because this is ridiculous. So I've got both frame rails made for the extended cab and that's why they are the long frame rails tacked in. So I'm going to finish the final prep of the passenger side of the truck ready to receive the frame and then I'm going to get this one welded in. So in the process of fabricating all these once I got the first one I used it as a fixture as you saw to cut all of the individual pieces with the miter cuts fit them properly and then a fixture to weld them all together. I have to do the ex exact same process to the old LS swapped Mazda and I made an extra set of frame rails for that plus a template. So I test fit the frame rails. This is extended cab frame rails. These will end up being standard cab frame rails. The extension off the end is obviously going to be shorter so that's why they're not on there yet because I don't know exactly what it's going to be. It depends on where I choose to cut the frame on the LS swap Mazda and the end of the frame rail is going to shorten up a few inches uh, but I didn't realize that when I made all of these pieces and to be quite honest I would have had no idea where to exactly cut it and where to put the shape on and have the holes in the frame for the back bed mounts. So once I get this truck, this truck fixtured up uh, and get one of the frame rails in position then I'll come back and make the adjustments for those. So that took probably an extra two solid days to get there with these but really what I've done is probably done a week's worth of work ahead of time for the LS swap Mazda. So as much as I'm not making any progress on what I hope is going to become my daily driver, um, I kind of paved the way to make quicker progress when I repeat this process on the LS swap one. So, all right, I'm going to go finish up the frame prep on that and get this into position and get it in place. And then I need to do the exact same thing on the driver's side.
Alright folks, that's going to do it for this video. If you're still with me, thanks. I really appreciate your time. And uh, I know there's a ton of things you could be doing other than watching my videos. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. So thanks again. If you're still hanging in there, hit the subscribe button and the like button for me, would you? Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video.